All right, welcome back to Relatively Conscious. My name is Antonius Brown. Irvin Bryant. Uh, this is uh, the Commonwealth Podcast. Uh, shout out to DJ DW for making the beats. At DW Made That on all socials. Yeah, and this is the uh, hot spot. Gentlemen and lady, this is the hot spot. You will enter it at your own risk. Yeah, debate portion. All right, so the resolution for today is? Resolved. President Trump will be reelected. Right, so I'll take the affirmative, right? So it's a fact debate, um, and that really means that there's three points we're going to make, right? So, yeah, it's definition, very simple. <laughs> yeah, definitions are real simple President Trump, President Trump, reelected, reelected, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, the first argument is that President Trump's base and his base of supporters uh, has never, never wavered, right? So, uh, in the recent polls, right, his, uh, Alexis' uh, favorability among Republicans is at a 90 percentile, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he has the most energetic supporters, right? So we look at the people who are energetic for the president, uh, for the two, two candidates between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Donald Trump's laps the numbers of Joe Biden people, right? So most people, when they say they're going to vote for Joe Biden, is not a emphatic vote for Joe Biden. People are emphatically voting for Donald Trump. Why that matters, though, right? It's so being emphatic being uh, happy, energized to vote for that president, right? Means you're gonna do the stuff that needs to be done outside of just voting. You're going to knock on doors, you're going to walk the neighborhood, you're going to sign people up, you're gonna register people to vote, right? These things are things that energetic voters do, right? There's a reason why uh, President Obama won both times because the black community was energetic and people like our grandmothers, our I mean, deacons at the church, were getting people to sign up to register to vote. If people are not energetic for, uh, for Vice President Biden, but are energetic for uh, President Trump, he has the groundwork uh, laid out. Number two, the system is, is set up for his reelection, right? So uh, gerrymandering in places like Georgia and places like uh, Florida, places like Texas, right? Uh, continue to give him an advantage that's already crux into the game, right? So almost as if you're playing a basketball game, his, his hoop is just two inches bigger than Biden's hoop, right? It's much easier for him to score in these places. Places like Georgia, we saw Stacey Abrams uh, carry the popular vote, but still lose in that state. Places in like North Carolina, where Republicans uh, got less of the popular vote, but picked up more seats in both houses, state houses, right? So the system is created and set up in a way where he has a advantage already going in uh, to win uh, the vote. And number three, like real, like the main most plain one, right, to me is that uh, he's Teflon Don, <laughs> right? <laughs> so he's always been able to, uh, he's always been able to take a hit and keep moving, right? And he has the ability uh, to have a controversies kind of roll off his back, right? So like, and you're thinking about 2020 and thinking about what happened this year, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? It's probably not the fact that President Trump was impeached, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the President, of the, United, yeah, <laughs> the President of the United States was impeached yeah. uh, by the House, right? What? And it almost doesn't matter if we're talking about it, right? So. The whole uh, Stormy Daniels situation, right? The president had an affair with the with the porn star. None of us remember that, right? Uh, the Russian collusion thing, right? So like, <laughs> none of us are thinking about that. The yeah. whole Ukraine thing, none of us are thinking about that, right? The fact that way back in 2016, when he became president on an Access Hollywood tape, he said things that were so vulgar it cannot be repeated on this podcast, right? So like, from Teflon Don, like John Gotti, mafia, mafia boss, boss yeah. of New York, mafia right? Boss, yeah. He just he's just untouchable, right? Nobody can touch him. And I think that matters because uh, as you move closer to the election and we get more October surprises and more slips ups and things that come out, right? Joe Biden doesn't have the same ability to take the hits and keep on moving, right? So if Joe Biden messed up in a debate and Joe Biden has a bad speech, those things are gonna be a, a significant hit to his campaign. We already know Donald Trump can't debate. We saw it the first time when he was still elected him president. So I think none of those things matter. That's my main three arguments. One, uh, that he has more energized voters. Two, the system is created in his favor. Three, this man's Teflon Don. Let's get it. I'm going to do all on case. That means I'm, I'm, on, I'm on your head, boy. <laughs> um, so first thing, energized base. It's going to happen. Like, definitely. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. So I'll concede the truth of the argument, but I won't, I'll have to contest the conclusion that you draw based on that truth. His base is very much energized. They are stable. Like you said, he could shoot somebody in the middle of New York, nobody care. 
But all of the fringe, all of the Obama Trump voters, right, are those who uh, in 2008, in 2012 said, okay, I believe in some hope, I believe in some change, and for one reason or another, we're dissatisfied and switched over to Trump are seeing the, the, the air of their ways, right? 2020, if not 2016, if not 2017, if not 2018, if not 2019, you're feeling the hurt in 2020. You lost your job, and that could have already happened, right? Because factories have been shut down. Um, but you definitely lost your job. People have actually died. Uh, there are real riots that are, regardless of which side you're on, genuinely frustrating. Um, and so all this exhausting unrest presidential inaction um, the fact that he's letting soldiers be picked off by a foreign power I mean in the polls the polls reflect this right so Joe Biden has uh, risen in popularity despite his general absence in the public space so Trump is just losing right his core is going to remain solid and of course he's always going to win some states he Texas was pretty much his uh, uh, it's a given and it has been for for the last couple of decades. But on the fringe, when we talk about a Michigan, which he won, he's not getting it back, right? And that used to be old faithful blue. Hillary Clinton fumbled the bag. But when we go on it on 2020, there's so many states that are going to flip right back to their uh, Obama era colors. Number two, the system is rigged against us. Us being the disenfranchised black in particular, immigrants, brown, uh, poor right we've done it before let's do it again okay joe biden ain't the man <laughs> to really get you know all these you know the obama coalition as they say of all these uh people who weren't reached out to before uh but one he's going to reach out to them joe biden may be old he may have gaffes uh, but he's not a fool he's had the political career that he's had because he's smart and strategic so behind closed doors when it's time to plan the plan will be immaculate his social media team excellent we've seen it you know throughout the, this this tumultuous season um, because Joe Biden has not been running his mouth and when he did he did mess things up but when he when he wasn't running his mouth his social media team was making excellent hit pieces on Donald Trump just pointing out the obvious and we see the fruit in the polling numbers so uh, as long as that strategy is intact and uh, as long as we can actually respond to it, right? As long as uh, uh, black people, poor people, gay people, women respond to that call, there can be that upset. It is an upset, definitely possible. I don't believe Trump will win. What was the third? The third one's Teflon Don. Teflon Don is dead. The real Teflon Don is dead. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, 50 Cent uh, albums, they don't move anymore. Right, the you know the the, the rap Teflon Don. Uh, the fact is, uh, they fall like they all titans, heroes, statues in the current <laughs> right uh, in in the in the zeitgeist now. Uh, it is possible uh, for him to lose as they all cascade together, especially especially where where power loses in an unprecedented way is when. Uh, the people's condition, the populace is the public's condition, is so particularly poor. The British Empire built an empire which the sun did not set upon, right? Like, hey, whenever the sun was shining on the earth, it shined on a British colony, mind-blowingly large uh, empire, and it fell because the conditions that people were living in got to the degree where revolution was the only option. Now, I'm not expecting a revolution, but if the second wave of Corona hits like it's predicted to hit, and Fauci has not called any misses so far. Uh, as a Texan, I have borne witness to the to the hell that has been rocked because we refused to wear the mask. Uh, so Fauci's been correct. And if flu season hit like it's supposed to, right on perfect timing for the election, it'll almost be like when Hillary Clinton's emails, uh, email investigation was reopened by James Comey, right? That was the death knell for the Clinton campaign. There was already so many things that had happened to you know, ensure a Trump victory, but that was the nail in the coffin. And if conditions continue to worsen, if the economics uh, of America continue uh, to snowball into a recession, that I pray we don't see one, but worse than 2009, 2008, it's over. Mm -hmm. So, Rose, I'm gonna get back, I'm gonna hit you back real quick, and then I'm yeah. gonna, just my, my actual real feeling, right? Yeah. Um, and the system, I think that the strongest argument is the system being rigged, right? Because yeah. And when my response to you is that there's an upset can happen. Yes. 
But the reason why I brought up the energized voters first is because for the upset to happen, you have to have energized voters who are going to do the footwork to make that happen. And I just, we just don't, I don't see that happening, right? So, um, recent numbers came out by new, new people being uh, registered to vote, right? Mm-hmm. Registered voters. Yeah. The numbers were down for Democrats and rough Republicans, right? Um, and they, they were down since the pandemic started. Now, before the pandemic hit, hit Democrats were doing their thing, right? But uh, in a world where you have uh, poor and disenfranchised people, you got to meet them where they are. So a lot of people get arrested to vote at college graduations and you know high school graduations, those type of things, right? If you don't have that, you can't re- register those voters. And that really matters when you talk about energized voters and the system being rigged, right? And in places you know, like North Carolina, like Michigan, you talk about are going to turn back. I just don't know. Because if the system is rigged, then it's going to take a lot of people in Detroit going to vote. And if they're not energized for Joe Biden and they're already hurting, will it not just be apathy and not go to vote, right? So in my real personal view, um, I'm worried, right? So like, I, it looks like, you know, it looks like the Rockets are up with a with a, with a nice size believe going into halftime. But I've seen us miss 27 straight three-pointers before. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I feel like it could happen again, right? It's definitely possible. Uh, and I, you know, Joe Biden um, is a skilled politician. The fact that he knows uh, to keep his mouth shut, to keep his mouth, when he needs to keep his mouth shut, and do things he needs to do, right? But I just, I wonder if people are going to sour to the whole idea of voting, right? And that's what's the more, more so the issue with me, right? It's not so much that because 44 million people did not vote in 2016 that voted in 2012. A third of that were black people. And we're having the same conversations about what well, should we even vote. Not conversations about how to hold Joe Biden accountable. Those conversations are necessary. But when we start asking should we even vote, that conversation I think is it bears no fruit, right? And I think, you know, the last thing, when Malcolm X, uh, when he says by any means necessary, he's in the Harlem giving a speech about uh, getting people registered to vote, right? So like our most radical revolutionary leaders Yes. Work to get people to vote, and if we don't embrace that, then I worry that Teflon Don can get a second term. And yeah, the the thing I don't people aren't buying into the fear mongering, right? Which I don't believe in fear mongering, but I mean like I believe in a warning. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people are saying sooth, and it's like, hey, you hate the statues, you hate the condition we're in. You know, President Trump tends a blind eye to racism. Then there's an answer to that people aren't heeding that warning. But 2020 is only halfway over. <laughs> there is so much more 2020 to be right. Children are going to have pres- the, the presidents. <laughs> the, 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 the Trump administration is forcing children into corona ridden schools. These children are disgusting. I work with children now. <laughs> They're going to cover the place of their saliva and then just scoop it all up and take it home. So I pray that doesn't make things worse. But then there's also flu season and uh, there's just there's just so many other things that can go wrong and the only way i would hope for things to go wrong is that i hope that we wake up to the reality that we have the ability to make things be better because there was an opportunity there are multiple opportunities during the obama administration for things to go this poorly even during the bush administration for things to go this poorly clinton the other bush like you could just go back and like crises were averted and some couldn't have been. But this, like these, all of the crises that we're in were 100% preventable, or let's not say 100, Corona would have struck. But the, what we're seeing now, avoidable. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I pray <laughs> yeah. that we can wake up to that reality that a simple trip to the public library or whatever your polling place is at could change that. Yeah, um, imagine if Donald Trump was president during the Cuban Missile Mr. Crisis. I mean, what America exists. Yeah. <laughs> what the Levels. world exists. Yeah, what yeah. the world exists all together, right? So, nuclear fallout. Um, go vote. Go register <laughs> vote. Go vote. Um, this or is nuclear the- fallout. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, my name is Tony S. Brown. Irvin Bryant. This is Road to Conscious, the uh, Kind of Vote podcast. Kind of Vote. We'll see you guys next week.